Salam alaikum, dear brothers and sisters, and welcome back to the Fatimiyah series, where we try to answer some of the most important questions raised in the community regarding the events of Fatimiyah. We are joined by Brother Hassan, who will be leading today's discussion, inshallah. Some people like to repeat a claim that Imam Ali salam maintained good relations with the killers of his wife. That if they had attacked his house and killed his wife, then why would Imam Ali salam tolerate them? So, Brother Hassan, can you please shed some light on this and clarify the nature of Imam Ali alayhi salam's relations with them? Wa alaykum salam, brother. You know, I really appreciate this opportunity. And I'd just like to say jazakallah khair for all your efforts to defend the mistress of the world, Hazrat Fatima and Zahra, salam alayha. And now that getting into the topic, you know, I find this idea that Imam Ali alayhi salam maintaining good relations with the killers of his wife, you know, I find this idea completely absurd. To be honest. Firstly, because the animosity of Amir al Mumineen alayhi salam for the oppressors of Hazrat Zahra salam alayha is not even a matter of doubt and debate, simply because there's an overwhelming amount of evidence and traditions, even from reliable non Shia sources that suggest otherwise. So I can present a few examples of famous Sunni scholars that have narrated traditions. And these traditions, they showcase the animosity between Imam Ali alayhi salam and the oppressors of Hazrat Zahra salam alayha. We see that in Sahih al-Muslim, it's reported that Umar, while addressing Imam Ali alayhi salam and Abbas ibn Abu al-Muttalib within a gathering of other companions, we see that Umar, he said, when the Holy Prophet passed away, Abu Bakr came to power and both of you considered him to be a liar, a sinner, a conspirer and a treacherous person. When Abu Bakr died and I became his successor, you considered me also just like him, a liar, a sinner, a conspirer, and treacherous. Now, based on this narration, right, here's some things that we can talk about. Number one, if Imam Ali alayhi salam considered them to be liars and sinners and conspirers and treacherous, then does it even make sense for him to be on good terms with them? You know, this, from a logical perspective, doesn't even make sense. And number two, can calling someone a liar, a sinner, a conspirer, and a treacherous person be considered as a form of praise or glorification? You know, logically speaking, the answer to both of these questions is no. You know, you can't ride in two different boats at once, right? Either the Imam considered them to be everything that was just mentioned, or he had good relations with them, but it can't be both. And if we go into another narration, you know, it's reported in Sahih al-Bukhari, on the authority of Aisha that Imam Ali salam introduced Umar as a tyrant and a despotic person and he refused to meet Umar. And she goes so far to say that the presence of Umar in a gathering it used to make Imam Ali salam extremely uncomfortable. So again, let's consider these questions in the light of this tradition, right? Why did Imam Ali salam refrain from meeting Umar ibn Khattab and felt discomfort in his presence? And also, would you maintain good relations with someone who makes you uncomfortable? So if I was to answer this, you know, we would likely not even maintain good relations with anyone who gives us the creeps, right? And it only makes sense when we see that Imam Ali alayhi salam had done the same. And in another tradition, we find that Umar ibn Khattab had complained to Abdullah ibn Abbas while they were on a military expedition to Syria. He complained about Imam Ali alayhi salam's refusal from assisting him in this expedition. And then he adds that he thinks that Imam Ali will always be uncomfortable with them. So why did Imam Ali salam, not participate in battles along with them? You know, it's human nature to help their friends when they need it. But here, Umar ibn Khattab is clearly saying that he asked for help, but the Imam clearly refused them. And so finally, let's look at one last tradition. And this one is recorded in both Bukhari and Muslim where it said that Hazrat Zahra was angry at Abu Bakr for usurping Fadak, and she was angry at him, had stopped all contact with him, and did not speak to him until she died. And she was buried at night, and Abu Bakr was never informed and prevented from reciting her funeral prayers. So why did Imam Ali alayhi salam bury Hazrat Zahra alayha, at night and did not inform them about her demise? And why did Hazrat Zahra express her displeasure with them and not speak to them until her untimely death? See, these are some of the eternal questions that the daughter of Rasulullah has left for the Muslims. So that they realize what had happened to her and who wronged her. 
you know, had there been any signs of good relations, would Imam Ali salam, not have shown them to the location of her grave? You know, her unknown grave is a testament of time that they were unhappy with their oppressors. And despite all the clear evidence, if someone still claims that Imam Ali salam, had good relations with the killers of his wife, I asked him to look at the third sermon of Nahjul Balagha, which is popularly known as Shak Shakiya. Does the content of the sermon suggest that it, the Imam was pleased with the murderers of his unborn child? See, in our books, it's reported that the Imam, that Imam Ali alayhi salam, had labeled their actions as extremely sinful and said that they knowingly opposed the order of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi So the point being that the Imam alayhi salam had repeatedly expressed his displeasure with the killers of his wife, with words and with actions. And this left no room for anyone to claim that they were good relations. And these are just a few examples. The Shia and the Sunni sources are filled with such examples that make it absolutely clear that the Imam had no sympathy or respect for these people.